to Minus Letter Live. My guest in this segment is Ben Ward. He's the CEO of Marican Group Inc. Trading on the CSE under the symbol M-A-R-I. I've got him live here via Skype. Ben, thanks for joining me today. Thanks. Glad to be here, James. All right, Ben, let's start off the conversation. Tell me about your agreement with the Alberta Gaming Liquor and Cannabis Supply. It's a great area agreement for us for the first six months, um, 3,375 kilograms. Um, I think we punched well above our weight in gaining a solid uh, contract uh, in Alberta, and I think it speaks to the uh, quality of the product and um, the brands that we've developed. And uh, there's a demand for a product, including rare dankness uh, for the recreational market. So um, the team that we brought in from Diageo has been working very well with all of the provinces and expect a lot more from us. And we have an opportunity to restock that order and then to increase uh, quantities for next year with Alberta. That 3,375 kilograms, is that a take or pay arrangement? And if so, what's the price per kilogram they're going to give you? Uh, it's, uh, we're not allowed to disclose price, um, but it is competitive with the market. And uh, I wouldn't say it's a take or pay. They'll restock as uh, necessary. Just like you have in the alcohol market, you have churn of product. And it's a matter of how much product moves on the shelf. So uh, we're confident in our ability to move that amount of uh, product through in the first uh, six months of rec and then to add to that in the future. Okay, so uh, you said that they are not, you're not allowed to disclose price, but it's competitive. Are we to infer from that that all of the suppliers to the Alberta Gaming Liquor Cannabis Board are, getting, are basically being paid the same per kilogram? Uh, it's all based on SKU, so you can submit your SKU list and then submit the products. And uh, I don't think there's any real lowball um, groups in there. The site visits and things that provincial suppliers have done, they're looking for quality of supply. So um, I think that, um, uh, uh, yeah, if you're looking at uh, the pricing, I think that everyone's competitive, um, but mainly it's based on your ability to supply quality product to the market said that you brought in a group from Diageo. I don't know whether I missed the press release. Can you outline who you're talking about exactly there? What's the nature of that relationship? Yeah, our uh, now VP of Sales and Marketing was the head of marketing at Diageo. And then we brought in our sales director, um, who was also the sales director uh, for Western Canada at Diageo. So we have a group that's experienced in working with the liquor boards, understand uh, what they're looking for, the supply chain management agreements, um, that are uh, supposed to be put in place and essentially they speak their language. So great relationships that are already existing um, and talented and understand um, the requirements for not only supply and initial listing agreement, but then also for delivering the product and then churning the product on the shelf. So it was a great addition to our team, bringing in uh, Jeff Bozar, who's the head of marketing at Diageo, and then Sanjay Patel, who is the uh, sales director for Western Canada, and then some more individuals uh, as well. Yeah, okay, so for the audience members who might not know, uh, Diageo is the company that owns the brand and distribution for brands like Ron Bacardi and uh, Tanqueray Jim and Captain Morgan Rum and Don Julio Tequila and among the whiskeys, Johnny Walker, Crown Royal, uh, Seagram's, then there's all kinds of other, oh, Talisker, Lagavulin, Oban. Bailey's and Guinness, my goodness. So to say that they are well entrenched in the global liquor distribution infrastructure is the understatement of all understatements. Yeah, it really is. These people have world-class talent and experience, and um, they were looking to move out of the alcohol world into the cannabis world, and we attracted them to become members of the American team. So their background is with Diageo and other groups, and uh, we brought them in uh, because we saw this is where the market's moving, and you need uh, the same groups that understand the alcohol distribution world. So um, they are happily uh, employees of Marican now, and we're, uh, we're thrilled to have them on board. Yeah, you bet. Okay, so uh, update us a bit. You put out a corporate update on July 5th. Um, you've got your LinkedIn facility expecting to turn out 706 kilograms per week at, at Lang Lang Langton. Is that uh, Langton, Ontario? Yeah, that's our main production facility in Langton, Ontario, and our expansion is, uh, is going well. Uh, the first area is now licensed, and by November 15th of this year, we'll have 706 kilos coming off of the line every week in a, a perpetual grow, perpetual harvest model. So with phase two that we're building out, that'll be ready 
and commissioned, if all goes well, as of February 1st next year. And then we're looking to have that product online, which is an incremental additional 1,412 kilos uh, every week coming off the line for a total production of uh, 2,118 uh, 2, kilos per week coming off the line. So our expansion is going extremely well. Um, product is moving ahead. And we're looking to be able to have some significant capacity online to supply all these agreements. Wow. Um, and in your German, your German operations update, uh, you've completed a retrofit of 49,000 square feet at es Ebersbach. And that's for uh, importing cannabis from Canada to be repackaged and sold into the German market? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's our own uh, import and distribution license. Um, Aurora made the acquisition of Padanios, which turned out to be a great move for them. Um, they're distributing product now in uh, pharmacies in Germany and in a few other locations uh, in Europe. Uh, they paid a lot for that acquisition. We essentially retrofitted 50,000 square feet of our facility, and uh, we hired the individuals who have the capacity and ability to um, uh, gain the license that we need, which is for narcotics import and wholesale. So we brought those people in, retrofitted the facility, and we'll have a start um, later this year on importing our own product and distributing it. Uh, within Germany, and uh, we have a relationship with the distributor there to be able to move the product. So um, sometimes uh, it's more beneficial to be uh, the second mouse as the second mouse gets the cheese. So in this case, we think we'll be successful in building out uh, the German market through our own uh, through our own efforts and not having to make an acquisition at that point. Yeah, and uh, the Malta thing is really intriguing to me because Malta is, uh, you know, essentially a uh, I mean, um, in terms of the size of a country, it's microscopic relative to the rest of Europe. So what is the significance of the Malta deal? Yeah, you have to look at Malta as being the most, regulator, most regulatorily advanced framework in the world. In Canada, we create cannabis flower. We can now in the rec market create pre-rolls, uh, other types of things like that. Um, but in, we can make our own THC distillate, which we do, but it's for research purposes. Uh, in Malta, we're able to take cannabis flower, extract that, and then really make the building blocks of all cannabis products, uh, which are um, made from isolates uh, or distillate of products. So we can fractionate, we can make pure THC, CBD, CBN, CBG. Then we can combine that with our Vesizorb um, drug delivery technology, really deliver quality products that physicians, because Europe is a medical market, understand dosage regulated that have greater absorption. So Malta is really fast forward to the year, five years down the road from what Canada may be from a regulatory framework, but we can do that now. So taking products from Canada, exporting those to Malta, doing all of the extraction, distillation, isolation, finished dose manufacturing, and then opening up those products for the rest of the world into Germany, into Switzerland, and into the rest of the EU. Hmm. Wow, that's, uh, that's intriguing. Um, so it gives you a chance to sort of get a lead on advanced product development for the European market. Yeah, we have all of the products that are ready and available with Bezizorb, our uh, partner, and uh, then being able to actually make them is the big plus um, without having to move through further regulatory hurdles. So it's, it's uh, moving ahead what we believe Canada will look like, whether it's one year, two years, or five years from now but doing it in a full EU member state and then being able to move those products to the European market. Sure. Um, ben, I have to say in that, you know, I talked to all uh, CEOs and all companies that are all the ones that matter anyways. And, uh, you know, the, the rate of development within Marican, especially in this last quarter so far, has really been, you know, impressive and, and surprising. I'm wondering, in your interpretation, why do you think the share price has sort of languished and just sort of drifted sideways over the last two or three months? Yeah, I think there's just uh, still uh, some uh, overhang from what happened in February. Um, the company is fine. Um, the company has moved ahead. We've executed on our business plan and made further additions. So uh, we think that once the market understands uh, what we're doing, and uh, you're an integral part of that, helping to deliver the message of what Marican is doing, uh, we think there'll be a response uh, coming into, in again. Um, it wasn't a catastrophic event although uh, for the business, although it was for the share price what happened in February, but the company is executing, the company is moving ahead, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're punching well above our uh, 
per the perception of Maricans weight in the market. And we're delivering on contracts in the rec space and on our commitments overseas. So I think it's just a matter of time until uh, the market comes back or uh, new investors uh, take notice of what Maricans doing. Well, sounds sounds like you're doing a great job, Ben. Thanks very much for the update. We'll come back to you soon. Great. Thanks a lot for your time, James. Always have a good time.